There's no feeling quite like beating a dungeon solo flawlessly. A few weeks ago, we brought you a warlock build that dominates dungeons. Today, we're bringing you a titan build that will achieve that same goal. And as strong as this build is, it won't stop you from dying by user error. So get out your pen and paper and get ready to learn how to put together a titan build that can easily solo any dungeon. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. When it comes to soloing a dungeon, there are three things that you need to think about. Number one, do you have the ad clearing potential to make it to damage phase? Number two, do you have the survivability to last both in the damage phase and the ad clearing phase? And number three, can you deal enough damage to not have to go through extra damage phases? So for the first part, I wanted to tackle survivability. I really wanted to go with Prismatic Titan, but in all honesty, I find Solar Titan to be the best at surviving any situation. While the other subclasses offer more damage resistance, Solar offers you easy access to restoration and even ways to extend it. And to address the ad clearing portion, with Solar Titan, you can get infinite access to immensely strong throwing hammers that allow you to quickly wipe out any mini bosses. Not to mention that we will continuously create sunspots that will damage damage and scorch targets and will have infinite uptime on Radiant for even more weapon damage. And finally, for DPS phases, we'll have access to Radiant and Weapon Surges giving us maximum damage with our weapons, and we can use our super to deal some massive damage in those easy to die DPS phases. And when it comes to the exotic, Syntheseps is the best option, though you could alternatively run Laurelie Splendor for that extra survivability, but you'll end up with less overall damage. So let's dive into the build and break down how it works. First up for our super, we are taking Hammer of Soul. It recently got a 25% damage buff against mini bosses and bosses. This paired with our later aspects and synthoseps, we can use our super in a DPS phase to not only survive, but deal upwards of 1 million damage. While this isn't the highest DPS, it's free damage and survivability. As for the abilities, I'm taking Towering Barricade as the class ability to give us a little bit extra protection in case we ever need it. For the melee, I'm taking Throwing Hammer. This not only gives you an infinite powered melee to use, but it also allows you to proc Radiant at range if you need to, which can be really handy in those longer boss phases where the boss is a little bit further away. As for the grenade, I'm taking Healing Grenade, and since we are going for solo dungeon runs, Healing Grenade is the best option for survivability and instant health. Taking a look at the aspects, I'm taking Roaring Flames. Now when we get solar ability kills, we can stack up to 3 times to get a 73% buff to our abilities. This not only makes our throwing hammer immensely strong, but also buffs our super damage as well. If you have at least one stack of roaring flames, your regular melee counts as a powered melee and will also scorch targets, which can lead to ignitions. It is worth noting that when running synthoseps, this buff is reduced to 33% at maximum, but is still helpful nonetheless. For the second aspect, I'm taking Soul Invictus. This makes it so that whenever you get a solar ability or scorched enemy kill, you create a sunspot at the target's location. These sunspots will damage targets, but if you pass through one, you'll get Restoration and Soul Invictus for 5 seconds, which will increase your grenade and melee recharge rate by 100%. This will also give your super 40% less drain rate, allowing you to deal more overall damage while using Hammer of Soul. So taking a look at the fragments, first up we're taking Ember of Torches. Now whenever we hit a target with a powered melee, we get Radiant for 8 seconds, giving us that extra 25% weapon damage. I also pair that with Ember of Empyrean, so that we can get Solar Kills to extend the Restoration and Radiant up to a maximum of 15 seconds, and since we plan on using our melee and running through those sunspots, we'll be constantly proccing Radiant and Restoration, and then extending it so that we basically have infinite uptime. I then like to take Ember of Searing, mainly so that killing a Scorched target gives you melee energy. This sounds counterintuitive since we have infinite throwing hammers, but if you do lose your hammer, this will allow you a way to rapidly gain it back. And finally, I take Ember of Ashes, so that we can apply 50% more Scorch from all sources. This helps deal more overall damage from sunspots, and in turn, more damage for your super. So what does this look like in action? Well, you want to start every activity by getting a throwing hammer kill in order to create a sunspot and start gaining stacks of roaring flames. Passing through that sunspot you just created will give you restoration, and you just gain radiant by using your powered melee. So now you can either keep killing 
dealing with your melee, or start using your solar weapon to extend that restoration and radiant up to that 15 seconds. When going into DPS phases, you have two different options. The first option is to use your super as damage. If you have enemies that will be close to you, it's a good idea to leave them alive so that you can proc your Syntheseps buff by being surrounded. Make sure to get a powered melee kill right before heading into the damage phase to keep up your three stacks of Roaring Flames. Pop your super and stand still while you throw your hammers to stay in that sunspot and deal more overall damage. This will give you about 12 seconds of safety and about 1 million damage in the right scenario, and this is generally the safest option to use. The second option you have is to use your weapons. Typically, I try to enter a damage phase by getting a powered melee kill to proc radiant and restoration and create an orb for our weapon surge. If you have enemies close to you, you can get another powered melee kill when your radiant timer runs out to reproc it and create another orb. Otherwise, you could just throw your hammer at the boss to reproc radiant and gain that extra 25% weapon damage. Since this option is a bit more risky, we want to make sure to enter the damage phase with as high of a restoration timer as possible. And when you get low on health, remember to use your healing grenade at your feet or pop that barricade for that extra protection. So let's talk about ways to improve the build. For stats, I aim for 100 resilience as my number one option, since we have so much constant healing from restoration and cure. I aim for 100 discipline and about 70 intellect so that we can have our healing grenade more often and get our super back in between damage phases. When it comes to the armor mods, for our helmet, I like to take harmonic siphon since I like to use a solar weapon as my primary weapon. That way we can get rapid kills to create orbs, which will not only feed back into our super, but will also proc our weapon surges. I then take hands on so that we can use our powered melee to gain extra super energy. And finally, I bring heavy ammo finder to generate even more heavy ammo since we will be the only ones dealing damage to the boss. And for the gauntlet mods, I'm taking heavy handed so that now our powered melee kills will create an orb, but it does have a 10 second cooldown. And I then pair that with impact induction so that when we use our powered melee, we now get back some grenade energy. Having that really short cooldown time on your healing grenade means that you can proc it more often, leading to more cure and more restoration. And I also bring harmonic dexterity so that we get a quicker weapon swap rate with our solar weapons. This will save us time between using our abilities and swapping between our weapons. And this could be the difference between putting out a bit more damage in each phase, which could end up saving you from going into an extra DPS phase. As for the chest mods, most dungeons will require you to run three resistance mods. I like to match these to the enemies I'm facing in the encounter. So typically I run two elemental resistance with a melee resistance. Make sure to match at least one of these elemental resistance to the damage of the boss so you can survive a bit longer in those DPS phases. When it comes to the leg mods, since we are the only ones dealing damage to the boss, I like to run three weapon surges. I typically run Dragon's Breath as my heavy weapon, so I like to take two solar weapon surges to buff my heavy and my primary, and then one strand or stasis weapon surge to match my backup DPS weapon. If you are running another heavy like Whisper of the Worm, then I would just run three weapon surges that match your heavy weapon. When it comes to the mark, I take Bomber so that I can use my class ability to gain back an extra 12% of my grenade energy. And then I also pair that with Time Dilation. Now we can hold up to a maximum of 45 seconds for our armor charge, which will make it easier for you to have your weapon surge active throughout your entire DPS phase. And finally, I take Powerful Attraction so that now we collect any nearby orbs just by using our class ability. When it comes to the artifact, this build will outlast this season. However, there are a few artifacts mods that will help this build out a little bit more. I like to bring Radiant Orbs for the extra weapon damage and time with Radiant. It's not super necessary, but it just makes sure that you always have Radiant active. Then I take Solar Fulmination, so the ignitions you cause will deal more overall damage. And then I take Shield Crush to increase the recharge rate on our grenade by being Radiant. And if you plan on using Whisper the Worm or another Sniper, you can bring Sniper's Meditation and Incendiary Sniper Rounds. Since this build is for any dungeon, you can use whatever weapons best match the boss that you're facing, though I have two loadouts that I really like. For my first loadout, it's usually for those non-precision based bosses. I love to run a rocket based combo, so I bring the scatter signal with overflow and controlled burst in the primary slot. And then for the energy slot, I bring a solar primary with heal clip. If you can also get one that has incandescent, this will also help you get back your melee if you ever do lose that hammer. And as for the heavy weapon, I bring Dragon's Breath. This rocket has to be one of the best damage per shot ratios, and it has good DPS, and because it deals damage 
damage over time, you can shoot a rocket and then hide for a bit if you need to, to start that health regen process. It really does feel like one of the best solo DPS weapons to use. For loadout number two, it's mainly for bosses that have an easy to hit crit or are further away. I bring a heavy hitting special like Names Lance, so I can use this weapon to take down mini bosses or tougher targets, and as a backup DPS weapon if I run out of ammo with my heavy. I again bring a solar primary weapon, mainly with heal clip and potentially with incandescent, for the extra survivability and melee recharge rate. And for the heavy slot, I bring Whisper of the Worm. This is a bit more of a dangerous option since we won't have as much survivability in a DPS phase, so make sure to play your life when you're running this option. Ah, uh, this build brings me back to the good old days of Bonk Titan. It's not as strong as it once was, but with the recent super buff, it still stands strong as one of the highest survivability classes Titans have to offer. But remember, mastering this build is only the beginning. Experiment with different combinations and tweak your loadout to suit your playstyle. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective, feel free to like the video and comment down below what you might change or how you'd improve the Titan version of the solo dungeon build. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next adventure, Guardians. Thank you.